But okay, yeah, let me ask you the first question. We have Ferdi here as well. Uh, so yeah, so you moved uh, you moved away from the uh, from Oslo. You moved to mm. Ulstaivink, and how how was it? How was it to move move away from the hometown? What's your experience? Um, first of all, I moved to Norton first, which was true. Yeah, yeah, um, and that is just two hours away. So that was like a uh, a nice first step because it's not too far away. So and it also has uh, good um possibilities of getting home with bus i think it leaves once an hour so it's it was no problem for me to get home from Norton first uh and that gave me like a uh, a good first step from moving away from home because okay i got homesick i can go just go home uh and then uh, get used to not being with my family over time um and then so this year being it's like seven and a half, eight hours away. Uh, it was, I think if I'd done that as my first experience being away from my family and my whole time, a hometown, that would have been uh, much more difficult. But because I went to Newton first, it was it was a good uh, first step and, and like a uh, adjustment over time instead of just boom, now you're just away from everything. Uh, mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. in a city where you know no one and um, yeah mm -hmm. it's, and it's been it's been uh tough at times i remember uh <laughs> the first day i arrived in Ustamik, uh i met the uh the, like the sporting director he took me to an apartment that he thought i would i would like and i went there yeah it's it's, it's good i'll stay here he left and then all of a sudden I was all alone in the apartment. Uh, I knew that I was seven, eight hours away from everyone I knew. I knew no one. The, the town is really small. It's like 6,000 people living there, six and a half maybe. Uh, and it's also on an island. So if you want to go to like a bigger city, you have to take a ferry, yeah. buses. It's... So yeah, when he left, I just stood in the apartment and I just started to cry. Because <laughs> okay. suddenly just dawned on me that fuck, I'm alone <laughs> I'm actually mm. alone in in, the, in what felt like a, a different country um so yeah that was that was difficult but then I what I usually do when I like have difficult times is I sit down and just write either uh with my hands or or on my computer so I just sat down started writing a paragraph and suddenly I felt better and I was like okay I'm here now. I just have to go. <laughs> there's mm. no, there's no use in in uh, feeling sad or, of course, you have to acknowledge the feelings, but but there's no use in just lingering with them. You just have to accept them and move on. And that's what I did, and turned out pretty well in the end. How yeah, old was yeah. he when he moved there? Uh, <laughs> when I went to Newton, I was twenty. Four, and then twenty five going to Ulsanvik, uh, and then I've been there for two years. Mm. Do you still yeah. carry on with that habit of journaling? Uh, when I feel the need to, uh, it's not something that I, I don't have like a, a set. Oh, I do this every Monday or every day at this time or every day at, at all. I I just when I feel the need to, I'll do it uh and that really helps me actually uh but yeah 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 bro i have like one routine that uh when i have problems i just write on a piece of paper problems and then just mm. make solutions to that so yeah so just like brainstorming with yourself is is very powerful yeah and, and the way that i do it, i don't think it's a it's not conscious but i you start writing because you're emotional. You start writing on top. You write the the emotions that you have and like the, the negative things, and then as you write, you um uh you deal with the emotions, and then you almost write the the solution. The lower you get in the paragraph, mm -hmm. the more you write, the the more the solution comes forward. So it's just yeah, yeah it's just such a good way of dealing with the the issues that you feel you know, on an everyday basis. Uh, build so much clarity when you do that. Mm.
definitely yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah i can relate to you as well when i moved uh, to liverpool there mm. was many many days where i was just not speaking to anyone to be honest so like i know these feelings it's it's very tough uh, when you're outside the as you said in a, in a con in almost in a new country and you don't speak to anyone and you don't know anyone and it's a small city as you said it's it's very tough so i can relate to you as well yeah and the the group that i got into there's like it was in uh 2022 last year it was it was a really um a group that really uh how do you say it? really really close to each um, other yeah together. close yeah um and uh it was a really good spirit within the group which was good uh so they they took me in really well and i got a part of the group but they all had friends within the group already uh who they uh did stuff with after training uh before training um so they accepted you really fast but you know you're only at training for three hours a day maybe <clears throat> so the rest of the uh, the rest of the day is like okay what do you do and the other guys at the team maybe had their habits of okay let's do this let's do this but uh then i stood there like okay what am i going to do they didn't really invite me to it either so if they if they even did something i don't really know but i assume they did because what else do you do with your rest uh i don't know 13 hours of the day so um it was that was difficult in the beginning too it was really good when i was training but I felt you you feel pretty lonely in those 13 other hours of the day where you just yeah stare into the wall at home waiting for the next training to begin mm -hmm. did that uh, kick in any initiative or anything you've mentioned journaling is there anything that is kick-started a new journey or a new habit for you i don't think so really uh it was just try trying to find uh things to fill the hours with uh mm. so because my day my day uh it really started in Norton because both places I didn't work besides uh, for the football mm. I just just play football um and then you get the you have to fill the hours with something and and what I did was because both Mouton and her trains in the afternoon, uh, we, uh, uh, from like three, four. So I went to, I usually would wake up and go to the stadium because both clubs had really good facilities with a gym. Um, so I went to the stadium, had a gym session, sometimes upper body, sometimes lowers, sometimes just mobility, just, uh, but it got, got me into this routine uh, um, and then went home eat sleep uh, and then go back to training and so in a way maybe it's the loneliness and not being like part of any like core group sparked that uh, routine which was yeah. really good for me because uh, there were some days not a lot but some days where I was like I'm not gonna go to the gym to this morning. I'd rather sleep an hour longer and then mm. just stay at home. Uh, and then the legs would be so much different in the afternoon session. Mm. So I would like really feel the benefit of going to the gym in the morning and just mm. like starting your day. It's not necessarily you have to do too much either. You just have to get up, start the day, get mm. blood flow through the legs and just mm. be ready for the for the session. Uh, so going back to your question, I think maybe actually yeah, if it if it didn't start the routine, it really like uh, enhanced it and really made me uh, appreciate it and like this is this is something that I really have to do uh, to to be at my best when training comes in the afternoon. Because I was looking in, into it, really. Um, you're only, like, 180, the centre-back. No, no, 186. 186. 
still considering like most percent of us that keep scoring and scoring and scoring, they yeah. tend to be like one ninety and over. Yeah. But obviously you doing all that extra work and you doing all that um final details and and making sure you're you're in top top shape has prepared you to be to be able to kind of like out compete people and stuff like that. Um what's changed your game to be more of like a threat, especially from an attacking perspective? It's honestly I don't have a good answer. Uh because uh I don't know if you remember it, Patrick, but when I played in follow I didn't score. True, true, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I never scored. Yeah. Uh I think I think I have like 70 games for Polo, uh, yeah. first team, and I have uh-huh. one goal. Wow. Uh, and then I went to Nuttall and I scored five goals in 25 league games and two cup games. So it was just something happening there. And I don't know what it was. I, should, I just, of course, you go to a higher level. So maybe the corner take is a, a bit better. <laughs> they hit, <laughs> hit where I want to hit a bit more. Uh, <laughs> Because I, I I can't think about anything specific that I did. It was more just, uh, yeah. We we started with having out swing corners, uh, mm-hmm. which for me I think is easier to to attack the ball on an out swing, uh, and I just and we didn't really have any um, patterns of the corner kicks either. It was just, I, I said to the coaches who then said to the corner, uh, corner kick take is, uh, hit this area and I'll win the ball. And that's what they did. <laughs> and it turned out pretty good. Uh, yeah. So, um, no, I don't really have a good answer. I just, I just started scoring. <laughs> and yeah, I kept on yeah. scoring. <laughs> yeah, Thomas, I'm asking... Go yeah, on, I, yeah. I wanted to ask Thomas about uh, his preparations to the game. If you analyze the games yourself, or do you have anyone doing this for you, or you don't focus on it? On it. Uh, I haven't really focused too much on it. Uh, previously, of course, the the team always does some some type of uh, analysis on the opponent. Um, in terms of the corner kicks, maybe there are some areas that okay they uh, structure in the in the box like this with sonal players here or there, uh, and uh, this guy has a tendency to if there goes a run past him he will take one or two steps out so this uh, space will be bigger, and then we'll try to attack that space. But that's more happened in in HUD um, in. Uh, in Newton, there was no analysis of the set pieces, at least. Uh, and in terms of the games in general, uh, I don't do anything on my own. I haven't done it. I've been recommended to do it by some some coaches. Uh, but and and of course, there I, I think there will be some benefit to it uh, if you do it. But I just haven't done it yet. Uh, I'm not gonna make up any excuses of why I haven't done it. It's just maybe I'm maybe I'm lazy. Uh, uh, maybe I could have should have started doing it. Uh, maybe I will start doing it next year. Who knows? Mm. Uh, no, we we had the, we had a previous guest that said that he doesn't want to over prepare. So maybe that's the case for you. Maybe and honestly, uh, some some people said to me that I uh, sometimes think too much. Uh, not that it mm. uh, hinders my game that much, but I think uh, because I don't think too much so that I get um, like paralyzed. But paralysis well, by analysis. Yeah, I, I haven't experienced that, but I think maybe um, if you like everyone who's played football up until they're 25 at a decent level, they have a decent understanding of the game. Uh, and some movements some actions are uh automized so if i maybe sometimes stop thinking and just do because my body's used to doing something i just do it on intuition instead maybe the outcome could have been even better instead of okay if i do this then this then this uh, mm. so not that it's something that i try to work on but i 
it's something that I reflected a bit about because I think it, it could be could be a, a positive thing. Uh, mm. At the same time, I played with you, Patrick, in third division with Folo. Then I started thinking because we got a new coach and then I started moving up in the hierarchy of football. So for me, maybe thinking is a good thing. Uh, yeah. Just balance, isn't it? Having yeah. the right balance. True. For um, me, it you... helped me. No, sorry. Go. For me, it helped me kind of familiarise scenarios because I play defender as well. Mm. Um, and just recognising patterns of it's just anticipating the game, especially when you go through a period where the new manager doesn't like you, does not is not playing you, and he brings his own players. And if you're not playing, you're not really familiarising them type of scenarios, mm. game in, game out. So it really depends on the situation. Um, obviously, you don't want to overdo it. That's why I want to do it like once a week. Um, but it's more kind of like recognising patterns, recognising and um, anticipating mm. early enough in the game, especially you as a leader and you're a captain and you have leadership skills, you want to be able to kind of relay that information to like your players, your midfielders and stuff like that because mm. maybe they can't see it or see it quick enough um, as you, let's say, because as a centre-back, you see everything and anything and everything. So I feel like it gives me that um, reassurance to be like, yeah, I faced every scenario when it comes to me... Um, having the initiative to kind of like do it through intuition, my brain is can pick it up straight away rather mm. than be like, what if, what if, what if, if that makes sense. Mm. That's for yeah. me anyway. Yeah. I totally get that. Um, yeah. I, I haven't anal anal analyzed too much, but uh, something that I really uh, focused on uh, in the last few years uh, because it's been introduced to me by coaches is is the scanning. So I don't really analyze too much beforehand, but I scan a lot during the games. Um, mm. And I really understood the, the importance of it, both on the ball, but also off the ball, especially as a defender, uh, the, and also the timing of it. Uh, so, um, and one thing we've had focused on with the coaches this year and last year was <clears throat> for me to um become even better at uh giving the correct messages to the players around me and that's also i think uh, some uh a part of the reason why we've conceded so few goals uh is because um of my communication skills mm. and being able to to and it's not it's not uh, you don't have to say anything amazing. It's just okay, Patrick. One meter left, or one meter right. That, that's it. Uh, mm. But if you just if you're just able to do that, for me as a centre back in a back five with four in front, it's uh, giving the correct messages to your wing back, uh, left midfielder, and the number six in front of you. If you had those three like on a leash throughout the whole game, mm. and you just move them a meter left or right, then it's going to be solid. <laughs> You're not going yeah. to concede too many chances that way. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's that's something that we really focused on and it's become really, really good. Um, yeah. We haven't done anything really special for it. It's been just... It's just... Uh, uh, like before trainings and before games, like going through your own mind, okay, what do I want to be good at this, this session? What's my like main focus? And... That's been one of the things for me throughout the last two years, really, and it's paid off. Mm -hmm. Definitely, You're a very intentional guy. <laughs> very yeah. intentional. Yeah, listen, listen, yeah. Thomas. So, uh, you made uh, you made your pro debut as a twenty five year old, and mm. uh, that's that's pretty pretty impressive, you know, to make it as twenty five year old. And uh, why did you? Keep. Why do you play football? Tell us why. What's your why? It's the best job in the world. Okay. I mean, we've spoken a bit like off before this uh, podcast about 
that I have a degree in osteopathy as well. And when I finished it, I worked for half a year while we finished the season in Follow. Or season, it was COVID, so it wasn't really a season, but still, it was trainings in the afternoon with work first. And uh, I'm not going to be one of those to say that I hated it because I didn't hate it, but it was it was not it was just not the same it was nothing's like playing football uh and uh um every year that i played i felt closer and closer to the goal of being able to live off of it uh in in norway you really uh, uh what's the word sometimes it's just one word it's just I'm missing. Mm. Uh, we're um, feel like a professional. You mean? No, it's it's, uh, it's something completely different. You okay. know, we get student loans, uh, so we get uh, a shit ton of money just to study. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and so for the four years that I studied, I was living off the student loans because I didn't want to. Uh, you know, if you study from nine to three, and then you go to training. Are you supposed to work after training until 10? Then your day is completely gone. You'll be exhausted and you'll have no progress. So uh, for me, I just lived off the student loans for four years. Uh, I was lucky to be able to live at home. Uh, and then every year I felt, okay, progress, progress, progress. Now I'm really close to, to being able to live off of football. So, and now that I've done it, it's like, it's, it's the best. You know, the only thing you focus on to, to, throughout the day is those three hours of football session to be the best you can be. Uh, and yeah, I just love training. I love developing. It's not It's not like you might remember, uh, Patrick, me being one who really wanted to win, like at all costs, every single yeah. time. Yeah, intense. Uh, yeah, way too intense actually <laughs> uh sometimes <laughs> and and that's i think you you would have been surprised if you train with me now uh because that's changed a lot now it's yeah. now it's uh not that i don't want to win of course you want to win but for me development comfort comes first and again once that there's, there's a lot of things that changed during the during uh 2019 season and that was one of those things, uh, going from a really like uh, winning uh, result focused mindset to to like, OK, how can I become a better footballer? How can I develop my my attributes <clears throat> to the best level possible? And, and that's really almost taken over instead of like wanting to win at all costs all the time. Uh, and that also uh change the way that I uh the way that I lead people to because in follow I would shout at people all the time. I think uh a lot of people were if not scared they would dislike me because I was shouting so much at them. Uh mm. now it's just it's completely different. <laughs> now I look at the people who shout and I'm like do, do you have to shout all the time like can you uh, i know you have to build up like a resilience in people but it's not all the time you have to build people up too and and talk to them <clears throat> and uh, like uh support them in making mistakes because making mistakes is is crucial to development Mm. And once I learned, I, once I learned those things for myself, it was easier to okay, hmm, maybe that's the way you you lead people is by supporting them and making sure that they keep on trying and, and uh, develop themselves. Mm. That's the thing. There's different leadership skills. Like obviously, you've got a let's say Martin Odegaard. He leads by example. Doesn't really shout much. Mm. He, let's say you've got Steven Gerrard. He shouts, screams. Let's say you have Roy Keane. He just smashes people. He's the authority. Yeah. Like a Patrick Vieira. Like what type of leader would you say you are? And why? <laughs> An adaptive one. Uh, <laughs> adapting to the. 
environment and the the group that you have uh maybe mm. uh, or maybe i just uh, because i became a captain at a pretty young age uh i was 21 i think and then i also been a captain at uh, the uh, under 19s before as well mm. um and i think when i became captain at 21 for the first team and we'd just been relegated the second time in three years so the first relegation almost the whole squad went second relegation the whole squad went uh except for me and one other guy and then we got in we just the, the thing the good thing about follow is that you know it's always a generation coming from the under 19s that really wants to get up to the first team and and that's what happened especially with the second relegation uh so that almost the entire under 19s were just lifted up to the first team and i think i felt like a responsibility for this team to to not go even further down uh mm. and um there are different demands from the like senior senior game compared to the under 19s and mm. um i think i felt like i had to make sure that okay now these guys are being like so many of them are being brought up to the to the senior level just like this uh with no transition it's just mm. from one day to another okay now you're a senior team player uh they don't know what the demands are they don't know because it shifts from being focused on development to being focused on uh results like that's when you're at the senior level you have to perform and you have to get the results like that's the mm. main thing and so i i think part of the reason why i was so harsh on the players in full at that time was because i feel like we need to have like a top standard for people to perform at the highest level they can immediately because we don't have to time to try and fail too much uh and we we didn't go down that year but it was like if a couple of games had gone uh bad it, it could have happened so that's probably why i went uh with being harsh during those years and then i went to northolden and it's something about you know going from third division to second division uh you're not on top of the hierarchy anymore uh at least you not from the beginning you have to like prove that you are one of the main guys so yeah. um you start by not saying too much then you 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 feel the environment a bit and then you start to be the leader that you uh are but at that team the the age composition was completely different mm -hmm. there you had uh some players who were 30 30 plus you're not going to shout at people who are 30 plus that's mm -hmm. not not in the same way anyways um so it just i think it was just a natural shift in how i um conducted the leadership role um and then now in had um like the the average age was probably 25 the same age as i was mm -hmm. and then you had some really really talented young guys uh who um uh, they didn't have the pressure of having to perform because they didn't play but they were in the in the group with us training um playing third division for the second team so so um for them it was just more becoming like a mentor mm -hmm. uh Yeah, um, try to support them in in developing and, and encouraging them to make mistakes. Mm. Like, mm. Yeah. yeah, okay, okay. So we have eight minutes left, so I need to squeeze two questions in one. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, I'll answer a bit more quickly than I've done in the. No, no, no. That's okay. <laughs> no, Take no, your time, good. bro. You're, you're uh, the main guy here. So, uh, yeah. Did you have any mentor? Did you have any guidance? And the second question is. Uh, you may how did you feel the first game you made it pro like did you feel 
differently or was it the same game for you did you like feel the same emotions or was it something completely different and how did you feel after was it like shit mom i made it or or was it just uh, bring the next one mm. so uh the first question uh i i didn't know at the time but i had a mentor in full uh i remember coming up uh, from uh langhus like uh, just a, it's not a professional club at all. It's just, uh, just a local club. Um, coming to the under nineteen to follow. Uh, didn't play. Uh, I was benched, so I didn't play. Uh, but I played. Uh, for the second team of the first team. So it was it's a, it was a bit a bit of a weird situation. But uh, the players who didn't play on the first team in second division or Ubus, depending on where the first team was. Um and the players who didn't play uh for under 19s, they played in third division for the second team. Uh which was uh, the the league system has gone through a restructuration. So it's it's not the same level as third division is now, but um so I played there and I played alongside this assistant coach of the first team uh in a in a duo in the back back four. Uh, and he's played, I think he has one game in the Elite Serie. He's played a lot of Ubus, uh, and he was, uh, 30 plus, uh, at that time. Um, uh, and, uh, I didn't know, but he, he just, he, it was not really nice for me to have someone with his experience playing alongside me, uh, who I could not consciously but unconsciously just learn of okay he does this he does this he moves like this when this happens he takes a few steps forward a few steps back uh so that really helped me um other than that i don't really think so uh because um when i when we played together patrick i was one of the oldest guys at the team even though i was 21 um when i played for newton i almost immediately became one of the uh, top guys. And even uh, although I wasn't in the captain's team, I, I had the, the captain's armband in the game uh, because of suspensions and stuff. So, uh, and in HUD 2, uh, the the centre-backs that I played with, they were like the same age as me. So there was no like natural mentors, but they we all although the players might be younger than you or, or the same age, you always, at least I do, look at them and try to learn. Like, what do they have that I don't? Mm. Which attributes do they master that I don't? And and you try to to learn from them. And, and if there's something that you're good at, you know, you ask them, like, okay, you're really good at this. How you become good at it? What do you think going into those situations? Uh, and I have no... I have no ego issues asking people like mm -hmm. how do you become good at this because I just want to be the best possible you know if I can learn from a 16 year old I'll do it uh, and uh, the second question you asked the professional game I, re I remember I was really hyped before the game like uh, it was a hype that I've never felt before um, and I played the game I remember I went into duels that I you usually don't go into it was just and i got a uh a ball come from here uh, i was going up to head it and some guy came in from the side and headed me straight into the head um and it was just like i was on the ground it was painful but i was, just get me up i just want to keep playing i just want to keep playing um so it was, it was a buzzing feeling throughout the whole game we won the game one nil uh on an own goal from a long throw-in, <laughs> sort of a shit goal, but uh, we won the game. And and I remember after the game, it was like, huh, this was this was it. it was, okay, this was Ubus. This was the second highest level. Not that it was not a a, a high level of football, but it was like, it's it's just eleven v eleven. It's just it's just mm. like a regular game. There's nothing. I mean, it goes a bit faster. The people are, uh, the players are a bit more technical. They make a bit better choices every single time. But 
there was nothing dramatically or drastically uh, different than playing a, a game of second division, third division. Um, yeah, maybe maybe the biggest thing that I've learned this year playing professionally is the how the small details affect the game. Mm -hmm. Uh, so like just one missed pass can change the the rhythm of the whole game from your team having uh pushed the opponent into their into their own box almost scoring goals and then you miss one pass and suddenly you're in your own box for 10 minutes it's just that's maybe the like the biggest takeaway from the season is how important it is to just do everything properly you don't have to be fancy tricking all the time you just have to hit the passes make the correct choices uh most of the time yeah consistency and fine margins isn't it yeah me too, bro. yeah definitely mm. okay last minute uh just tell us about your future plans what you what's your future mm. plans well um my contract is is running out now with the hut um so uh, most likely it won't be renewed. Um, it's natural when you go down. Some people leave, and and I've felt like the past two years I've played really well and uh, should be able to to keep playing uh, yeah, at that level that I played this year. So that's the goal. Uh, if it happens, we'll see. Uh, I hope so. And and if I have to go on trial, I go on trial. But we'll see. Um, the only thing that I know is that I'll keep playing football. That's for sure. Keep going, yeah. bro. Uh, 